Good morning, everybody. It is Daniel Vitoj, and I welcome you to our webcast regarding profit distribution rules in the Czech Republic. And hopefully, you will enjoy the time with me because originally we, we were supposed to be here in two with Lenka Lasenska, a managing associate in our legal team. Unfortunately, Lenka is not able to join us today. So, you will have the pleasure to listen to me. My name is Daniel Vitoš. I'm senior manager in our team. I'm focused on corporate law structuring and uh, M&A transactions. So I have a few years <laughs> experience uh, with profit issues and hopefully I will satisfy all your questions and will present you for next probably 40, 45 minutes uninterrupted on my own. Uh, before we start about our context, just just please basic rules of this webcast. So feel free to put in your comments and questions. Uh, if 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 it gets to me, I will answer them right 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 now here in the webcast. If not, it might happen that I don't know the answer, uh, which is not probable, of course. Uh, or more probably, I'm not fully skilled with our webcast uh, environment and last time I <laughs> missed two questions. So uh, don't worry if I miss your question. Uh, I will definitely come back to you after the webcast during the follow-ups. So please, please uh, raise your questions. It will make it more interactive and more interesting for me. It's always good to you know, know your point of view and your practical issues you have to handle in your everyday life. Uh, so, please make your comments. Uh, what will we discuss today? We broadly describe uh, our webcast as, as the profit distribution rules and everything you need to know uh, from basically two, two reasons. First reason is because it's cool and uh, everyone wants to distribute some money uh, from his firm. Uh, the second is that th th this, in this period of the year, it's usually a dividend time because of the financial years and uh, by the end of December. And now uh, companies are finishing their financial statement statements and wants to decide on the distribution. And if they don't want to decide on the distribution, they want to think about what to do with the loss or they just want to know what should be done to be compliant with the regular, legal regulation, even though you don't want to distribute any money from your company right now. So uh, we structured our presentation about several important questions you should ask yourself during the process of closing your accounts and, and coming to the distribution of the dividend. And it's when you can distribute it, to whom you can distribute it, what are the conditions, what type of profit share you can distribute, what material you can distribute, and of course, probably most importantly, how much you can distribute. The structure is, of the law is made in the way that you have to ask all these questions at the beginning, at the time of the general meeting. The general meeting decides based on answer of, to these questions. And then there is a statutory body who has to decide on the payment and wears its own burden uh, about responsibility. So we will come back to this later on in the, in the presentation. So when you can distribute? Uh, it's a long-term issue and question through, through the Czech legislation over the past 20 years, probably. Right now, the topic is quite clearly decided but it comes back to us all the time because there used to be case law saying saying that it's not possible to distribute dividends uh, after six months after the end of the financial year because at the moment the figures are too old to be used it doesn't apply anymore uh, there was a process during the time just to briefly summarize or when the current Act on Business Corporation was enacted and effective on 1st January 2014, uh, the discussion started because the rules for distribution change and the jurisprudence fought. Uh, the six months test doesn't apply anymore, but it was still a little bit under question. Then there was a resolution of the Supreme Court, 
which confirmed this, as you can see, in March 2019. So basically, it was given by the case law since that, and definitely this issue was decided was decided uh, in the novelization of the Act, effective uh, from 2021. So we live in this area almost two and a half years right now. So we know that you can distribute the profit through all, all the following financial year after the financial statements are after the date of the financial statements. So very simply said, you can decide if you have a classic classic uh, annual financial year, you can decide through the whole through the whole 12 months of this year. So you can easily decide in September. Uh, one one related question to this if you can decide during 12, 12 months uh, what does it mean whether you can decide only once and then you lose you lose your accounts or what does it mean uh, there is quite clear agreement in jurisprudence I don't, I don't know about any any direct case law but it's clear that you can decide on multiple times the tricky question is uh, how to do it precisely from legal perspective, but if you have a distributed your profit 100, you can decide on 20 in in June, and then you can decide on 25 in August, and then you can decide on 50 in November, and so totally, totally fine. A little, little bit more difficult is if you decide on 80 in or, or, or one, let's say, let's say uh, 60 in June, and then you want to decide about more later on that's something which is not possible yeah you must still keep uh, within the limits of the dis uh, of the distribution test we will discuss discuss further so yes you can decide multiple times if you don't know what to do with the profit in june you can easily decide on uh, reallocation of the profits to the previous years profits and it's fine and then you can you know distribute later on this amount again. Yeah? The question to whom you can distribute it and what are the conditions in fact? Because general rule says uh, the profit and other equity or resources can be distributed among shareholders and only among shareholders unless you have special, special regulation in your memorandum of association or articles of association Typically, other persons who can, can receive part of the profit are members of the statutory body, so directors in Czech, so-called tantiema, some, some types of employees if the company wishes to, wishes to incentivize them through the profit, or other third party, typically uh, so-called silent partner so in a silent partnership if you have some you know silent investor in a firm you can be entitled to receive part of the profit as well uh, so there used to be questions in case of tantiems uh, whether whether you can distribute the, uh, this profit for board members of the board of directors only in case if it's connected to the dividends to other shareholders or not uh, historically, there was case law saying you must always decide on the profit for the shareholders, and then you can decide for the benefit for towards towards uh, the directors. Right now, it's again overcome, and you can dis distribute it to to the directors without any distribution of the profit to the shareholders. Uh, in this connection, one one topic which is quite often you know overlooked in practice and that's distribution uh, of you know benefits uh, benefits to your shareholders and uh, related parties to them uh, it's new a lot of the new legislation it's uh, section 40 paragraph 5 of the act of business corporation and basically the law says with some minor exceptions you should not give anything without any reasonable consideration to your shareholders or the related parties. 
it seems to be obvious, but in practice, it may happen that the company with the social orders decides to give a car to its social order. So this is not allowed anymore, and should it be allowed uh, even before because it was probably uh, in a breach of due care of the directors. But now we have this this uh, regulation right in the law. I assume most of you are not from the companies doing this type of operations, but it might be sometimes tricky because especially within intra-group operations, within the bigger groups, there sometimes might be some you know, trans transfers without any consideration, without any paying back between shareholder or related parties, and that might be an issue from the legal perspective. So please keep this in mind because it's very, very often omitted in the practice. Again, one one remark uh, slightly related to this special issue about uh, no consideration payments to the shareholders. Again, if there are any other distribution from the profit from the company, uh, the basic rule says yes, uh, the general meeting is the body deciding on about the profit. So always there has to be a decision of the general meeting. And when to pay? When to pay once you have, uh, have the decision, when to pay to the sh your shareholders or other parties. Historically, there were different different uh, terms given by the law. Right now, it's quite straightforward. Once we are talking about standard dividend, you have three months since the decision of the general meeting. So basically, if you decide like next week, mid, 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 of, mid of May, you have three months to pay it out, meaning June, July, August, so mid of August. This this period is just given by the law, but it's not mandatory, and it might be decided differently, or it might be it might be set up in your articles of association, otherwise, uh, and the term might be longer. For example, sometimes it happens. We saw it in practice, and uh, one very important remark to this issue. Please be careful because the tax law doesn't count with this and doesn't care. So you still have to pay the withholding tax within these three months, even though the cash must go out, let's say, in six months. Uh, one, and one practical issue here, uh, the dividend in principle, except things we, we will discuss further, should be paid in, in, in financial, financial means and it should be paid via bank transfers. Uh, especially in joint stock companies, basically there's a rule to, to have uh, an, a bank account of the shareholder in the list of shareholders and this bank account is, uh, is the one in, where you should pay the money. So if the, the bank account is not filled in and the shareholder doesn't provide it even after after notification, he has to he, the company doesn't have to have to pay it or doesn't it's not in a, in a delay with the payment until the company has the bank account. So and what I said uh, the, what you can distribute here. Yeah, I said it should be primary money, but in fact. This may may vary, and this may vary in from various point of view. One if one point of view is, yeah, you are paying money, but what was the currency? In practice, in the Czech Republic, as the as a country with a quite strong foreign capital, many shareholders are from from other typically EU countries, and they want their profit, but they are not interested in Czech crowns. So the question is, can you distribute euros? The answer is yes, but be careful. Basically, the be best be best approach is to determine both values in the decision of the general meeting, saying that, uh, of course, you can decide on distribution of euros, but the legal tests must be uh, must be made based on on the figures in the financial statements you have. And typically, the five statements will be in check crowns. So, you 
uh, you as the board uh, as the board of directors and subsequently the general meeting you have to understand what are the figures in your crowns and what, what is the cor corresponding amount in euros then you can decide we always prefer to decide about about the distribution in check crowns and put put to it in brackets or associate the, the, the euro amount or the vice versa just to say yeah the general meeting decides to distribute 100 euros corresponding to i don't know what was it what's now 2350 50 check crowns and this amount is fine with the legal tests we will discuss further yeah another question is if you distribute in another currency please be careful about about the exchange rate and exchange rate implications because again you might, might have some figures but they change over time and even recently the Czech crown uh, have gotten stronger than before and it, it made a move in the calculation in some of our clients so please be careful and choose your, your exchange rate wisely uh, we usually recommend to look into your accounting. What's your accounting policy about exchange rate use? Sometimes companies use daily daily exchange rate. Sometimes they use monthly exchange rate, and it might it might be very different within uh, let's say 15 days between the first first day of a month and 15 days of a month. Uh, the euro it happened several times in the past that the euro moved significantly and the tests were totally different. Yeah? So keep that in mind, and if you decide about about dividends in another currency, uh, proceed with careful approach and always know the figures in crowns. So another option is to distribute a non-monetary share, so in-kind share, uh, which means you can, if if the articles of association allow that, allow that you can distribute something tangible the, the discussions are what are the precise rules to this what are the precise rules to this and the answer is no one no one really knows because the law says you can distribute in kind but yeah. but nothing else yeah so the best practice and the, uh, the common sense and agreement is that if you distribute anything in kind you must you must evaluate it by uh, an independent expert sort of to be able to set up the right right value of the thing and then make the test based on the fair market values of the thing you want to distribute and then there is a discussion what you can distribute yeah probably there is no discussion that you can distribute tangible things the company owns like yeah, a typical example is, is real estate and then you have more and more more questionable aspects like car, if you discuss cars probably yes products of the company yes shares of the company that's that's a interesting to interesting questions and and then you go to do you know a gray area like labor or services which we would definitely not recommend to do uh, what is important and why we don't see uh, often distribution in kind is the tax rated tax regulation because usually the Czech law the Czech tax law uh, doesn't follow the Czech corporate law and the law uh, doesn't know what to do how to tax in kind dividend and probably probably you will always have an issue to achieve uh, you know the zero withholding tax on this type of uh, of in kind dividend so again if you want to do it it's legally possible but be very careful how to do it and be very careful what you want to distribute we always recommend to distribute something valuable something easily to determine and easily to transfer based on standard agreements we know under our law uh, we have one question so i will jump into the questions the question is if there is a decision on profit distribution can it be paid via netting with current account with the shareholder 
Okay, uh, if I understand correctly, uh, netting with the account, account with the shareholder. Uh, if the shareholder uh, has a debt towards the company, you can offset it against each other. Yeah, it's fine because once there is a decision of the general meeting, there is existing existing uh, liability and receivable. Yeah, the company has a liability to pay uh, to the shareholder shareholder some amount of the of, of money, and the shareholder might have corresponding uh, liability to pay to the company. So yes, once these two two met, uh, you can you can offset them if it's if it's the question. Yeah. If not, please maybe put your follow-up follow-up questions to your comments, and maybe I will come get to this later, or maybe I I will answer it after this webcast. Yeah. If I if I miss the point. Yeah. So definitely you you don't, you don't have to always pay pay the money to the account of the shareholder. That's 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 true. It's not the way that uh, you have to pay the money to the shareholder and he has to pay it back. Once there are two existing receivables against each other, you can offset them, yeah, that's clear. Fine, and uh, one interesting aspect, which we can see sometimes in practice, it's the question of a fixed profit share. Yeah? The articles of association may stipulate that certain types of shares you have to you have to construct special types of shares in your articles uh, is connected to fixed fixed profit share yeah this this profit is pay payable not within three months but is payable right after decision of the general meeting and basically the only following regulation is the insolvency test on on payments payments as we will discuss far, uh, far in this presentation and the board of directors basically have to have to take the decision of the general meeting and immediately immediately decide so uh, another question is there any time test for distribution of the company profit after the spin-off due to spin-off company change shareholder? uh okay I, I like your questions not 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 easy ones uh depends what you ask uh, i'm a corporate lawyer so from corporate law perspective no it doesn't doesn't matter basically uh the shareholder who owns the share at the and then here here's the little bit tricky part uh, in the case of limited liability com companies, who is the shareholder at the time of the general meeting? He's liable for the profit. In joint stock companies, it's slightly different because you have here something called decisive date, which usually precedes eight days to the general meeting, and it basically says who is the shareholder at the decisive date is uh, eligible for, for the profit related to this share. So, no. You basically, and it, and it happens in the United States all the time when the big companies go go for the dividend dividend season. Uh, the investors quite often sell their shares because the shares are more, more valuable in view of the upcoming dividend, and and the buyers buy the shares in view of the dividend. Yeah, and there's some type of handle and game how big the dividend will be and who will, who, who will profit from this okay, so no time test from this perspective i don't know whether this question goes to tax aspects of time test ownership because there's something something like uh five three one one year time test based on the, on the fact who's the uh, shareholder uh, for dividend uh, exemption, dividend withholding tax dividend exemption, and uh, in such a case, I will answer in a way it's complicated. <laughs> so, if your question is tax-wise, sometimes it might be okay, sometimes it might be an issue, and you will lose your previous time test. So, if you are interested in this, uh, let us know. We can we can definitely discuss this with you as well. We have a team of tax advisors, but still 
even though I, I spent quite a lot of time with Autex viruses, I, I don't feel qualified to you know fully answer tax questions. So if the question is about tax time tests, uh, please put it in, into questions and we will follow up on to this. If, if, if it was about just who, who is the owner of the share and how long you need to hold the share to have the right for, for the profit, uh, the question is uh, there is no, no legal test. But if you buy it a, a day before before the, the, the dividend distribution, you are at a risk that you, you will tax it. So, so, uh, and here, here's the map, and here's the fall true wisdom: what you can distribute, and what you you shouldn't be distribute from your company. As you can see, it's quite simple and straightforward. It's overview, and uh, if you want the presentation, you will definitely have it for for your use. I sometimes look into, into the, it on my own, but very briefly because I don't want to go through tables here but uh, very very simple and maybe sometimes even common sense aspects registered capital you definitely can't distribute registered capital and in fact you have to cover your registered capital all the time as you you, you will see later on uh, there is a if you want to distribute your registered capital there's a special special procedure which is quite complex and and, and complicated and takes usually about half a year so uh, another common wisdom is uh, unless you have special reasons to have huge registered capital, please don't do it because it might be complicated for you to do with it uh, anything in the future. Then you have, we have other equity funds, basically share premium. It's absolutely fine to distribute. Uh, other equity, usually it is. Uh, uh, unless you have some special types of equity funds uh, reserved for for non-distributing, then I will just jump over one 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 row and uh, the various differences, uh, valuation differences from transformations of the companies. These uh, resources are qualified as classic owned resources. Is discussion whether it's sort of profit or sort of sort of other equity funds. But in principle, it means that it's fully distributed according to the legislation. What is tricky and what is uh, fine to be careful of? It's valuation differences from revaluation of assets and liabilities. Yeah. Uh, what I understand, it's sort of accounting treatment. Some 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 assets are revaluated on on a yearly basis. And basically, it just reflects some, you know, exchange changes and some some other accounting procedures. And these differences changes over time. And one year can be high, one year can be low. So that's the reason why these are definitely not distributable because these don't, these don't reflect real value you have in the company. So and then we have profit fund side, but we have one additional question so I will just jump into the, into it how many exchange rate differences are there, there in the foreign currency distribution GMs besides 25,000 Czech crowns so 1,000 euros on payment of the exchange rate 24.5 Czech crowns per one euro what amount should be paid 1,000 euro as originally decided or Okay, okay, okay. If you want to pay 1,000 euro, what should you, should you decide? And what you, what you should you do with the difference? Okay, maybe I will follow up to this uh, after this webcast in more detail because uh, I'm just jumping through the figures. But uh, the rule is you have to decide what you want to distribute. Yeah. If you want to distribute 1,000 euros, you basically say uh, the, the decision preferably should be and what we do, we distribute 1,000 euros, which corresponds today uh, to the amount of uh, 25,000 Czech crowns. And basically, you should then pay 1,000 euros, make the test on 25,000 Czech crowns, 
but yes, it may happen. There will be difference, loss, loss, and uh, loss, and or, or profit on the exchange rate difference after some time. When after the uh, at the date, at the date of the distribute or, or payment, to be to be correct. And this this difference could be somehow accounted as other uh, other exchange rate aspects. But to be honest. That, that's, the, that's the general wisdom, but to be honest, uh, if you want to dis uh, follow up on more details in accountings, uh, I will come back to you later because that's a little bit too much accounting for me as a lawyer, unfortunately. But uh, legally, always the decisive aspect is what's, what you decide in your in your resolution of the general meeting. So if you if you want 1,000 euros, you have to say I distribute 1,000 euros, which corresponds to some some check crowns. If you want to distribute euros, but specific check check amount, you have to distribute I distribute this amount of check crowns, which will be paid in euros, and that corresponds to x x x euros right now. So I'm I'm jumping. I'm, I'm quite slow today, interestingly, but maybe it's because you have you have smart questions. Uh, I will jump to the to the other part uh, of the balance sheet and distributable funds. Uh, uh, reserve funds and different other 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 funds in the company. Generally, these funds are distributable because we don't have a mandatory reserve fund anymore. But if you have any reserve fund, or any other funds given by the decision of regional meeting or the articles which say these funds are not distributable surprise surprise you can't distribute them uh, otherwise there is no direct mandatory regulation given by the law so you what you have your in your other funds you can distribute them and then you have uh, some parts of the profit of course you can't distribute loss but if you have any retained earnings from previous years any or uh, any profit of the last financial period you are eligible to to distribute it uh, here is overview of the test so what are the conditions what are the limitations what we what we can distribute we, we will look at it in in examples uh, just to give you feeling uh, what was the situation to be honest, after the last uh, amendment of the law, the table is relatively e is easier than it used to be before. Uh, right now, basically, all the free balance tests, resource tests, equity tests, and, and development cost tests are applicable to all distributions, especially if we talk about uh, standard dividend distribution. Uh, the advance payments on dividends are slightly different, but in principle, we always recommend to follow the same logic. Uh, then, once the general meeting fits the balance test, there's a time for, for the board of directors to decide on the payout. And there's something we call insolvency test, basically saying that the company must not get insolvent due, due to the distribution and uh, another important important aspect you always have to decide based on some financial statements a standard dividend must be decided on based on or, or standard ordinary annually or extraordinary financial statements advance payments uh, might be decided based on interim financial statements we will get to the back a little bit later how much there is a, a uh, full detail of the test you have to do and this sequence of the test you should do. Basically, you have the resources test, very simply said, you will take all the profits you have from this year, previous year, you discount all the losses you have from this year and previous years, take away any any uh, reserve funds or funds you can't distribute based on your articles and you must fit to this to this amount. If you have this amount, and discount it from your equity, you must check that the registered capital is still still covered by the equity. 
So basically, this it, it used to be different, but again, uh, the rule is the same. So despite whether you are a limited liability company or joint stock company, you have to always cover your registered capital by equity. And uh, if there is a discrepancy, you can't distribute this amount. And then there's the sort of you know magical and mysterious uh, line about development cost. Uh, saying that uh, you did, saying in a very complicated way in the law, but in principle, if you have any uh, development cost shown in on the asset side of your balance sheet, you should discount them from the amount to be distributed. We we have an, uh, one example to this, so you will see how it should go in practice. So and and examples. On the left side, there's example one. Uh, when when we look at the liability side uh, of the balance sheet and look for distributive funds, you can see we have one thousand. Uh, well, sorry, uh, one hundred thousand uh, check crowns of loss. We have uh, also seventy thousand uh, of profit and and then valuation differences. 100,000. So the equity is quite fine. You have 70, 70,000 check crowns of the equity, but basically the valuation differences are not distributable, and you're just looking for the profits and loss, and you see you have minus 30, so you can't distribute anything. The the other example again shows a different situation when you have 120 of profit but you have also previous loss 200 and uh, so if you look uh, at the distributable profit you have bad luck you have minus four, minus 80 and you should not be able to distribute but you have another 240 uh, thousand crowns in the other equity funds and these funds are uh, part of this test so you count count it and you see you have 160 of 60,000 check crowns distributable the tricky part here is you can't decide on distribution of profit because basically there is no profit to be distributed but you still can decide on distribution of this equity fund that's, that's one important aspect to have in mind that these tests are common for profit and other equity funds or own resources distributions. So the amount says how much money you can distribute from the company, but always you have to always keep in mind that you also have to decide uh, from which uh, item uh, of the balance sheet, what, what, from which fund you are distributing. Yeah, so in this case, you have to distribute, yes, I'm distributing 160,000 check crowns from the other equity funds. If you if you would say I distribute 160,000 check crowns from from the profit, uh, uh, the, the decision is void. It's 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 in, invalid. Uh, and then there there is another example, including this intangible de development costs resulting uh, in the in the asset side. There are two aspects. It's just another calculation. Very, very quickly, you can see you have fine equity in some 110,000 10, check crowns. Registered capital is 60, so you can't touch the registered capital. And you, you go for the return earnings and uh, current year profit, and you see you have, you, you have 50, 24 plus 40. Great. Yeah, I can decide on on 50, but no. Oh no. Let's look at the asset side. If you have 20, 20 of of this uh, development cost in the assets, and I can't distribute this, so you can distribute only 30 in this case. Yeah. One related question to this aspect is: What does it mean uh, development cost? Uh, yeah, you know, recorded on the asset side uh, of the balance sheet. And uh, there might be different answers because sometimes you make your own development uh, and you produce, produce some new great product resulting from this. And this product, product is definitely not accounted in, the, in this, in this uh, B1, 1, 1, 
one one line uh, it's not like uh, intangible development cost it's just a product it's just just your your stock so the question is whether you should or should not uh, decide on discounting all these things the issue is if you do this it's super complicated test and it will probably miss the point because it it, it, it would you know paralyze any development co oriented company so in practice uh, as we say, the argument right now is the, the blind stupid lawyer argument, which means you look at, a, at this B11 line, if there is something you discount it, if there is nothing you, you don't care. Uh, insolvency test, but uh, I will just one last step back, just to make, make clear because it's, there are quite often uh, questions about this as well. What we discuss here were the equity tests, the balance tests, what you can distribute. But in practice, uh, these tests, as you can see, are mostly looking only at the liability side of the balance of the balance sheet. We are not talking about the asset side almost at all. Uh, it might be weird because let's say in our case here, you, you can see we can still distribute 30, 30,000 check crowns of a profit and no one cares what the company has or, or doesn't have uh, 30, 30,000 check crowns on the bank account. Yeah. And the answer is that the legal doesn't care. Basically, if the shareholders decide on the equity distribution or profit or equity distribution and it fits to the legal tests, the company has to find out how to get the money. And the only regulation possible in this case would be insolvency test, which is right here. The insolvency test is sort of, uh, you know, last, last border before the money leave the company and get to the shareholder. It's last protection. It comes after the decision of the general meeting. And insolvency test is, obligation of, of the directors personally. Yeah, it's part of the basically due care. Well, what the rule says, very, very simple, very simply uh, the distribution oh, payment, payment of the, the dividends to be distributed must not cost insolvency of the company. If it happens, uh, if, if, if the distribution would cause the insolvency, the board of directors is uh, obliged not to pay it. And uh, if there's no other decision, uh, there is a general rule in the law that the un un unpaid profit comes back to the uh, retained earnings of the previous year. What does it mean insolvency? Uh, there are basically two or three, three tests uh, uh, of insolvency under the Czech law. Both are quite quite reasonable and understandable, but quite wicked uh, in a practice. Yeah? One is so-called cash flow test. Basically, you have to have um, multiple creditors, not just one, but more than more than one. And you are not able to pay pay your liabilities. The law stipulates that uh, you have. You are not able. You have you have liabilities for more more than forty days of overdue, and you are not able to pay them. Yeah, and and it's associated with uh, you know assumption that you are you are not able to pay them if you stopped payment payments or you have defaulted for more than of three months for, from for your liabilities and you are not paying and there are multiple execution against you and uh, they are basically not effective against you. So if you are not able to pay your, your liabilities and you are in significant overdue, there's the situation of cash flow test insolvency. And there is a, there's the tricky one, over indebtedness test. So basically the company is insolvent uh, in, the liabilities of the company are higher, exceeds the value of the assets. It sounds quite straightforward, but again, it's a little bit trickier in practice because 
because uh, you know your liabilities usually. You, you, you can look into your accounts and you can see your actual level of the liabilities unless there is something really bad in the company. But the naive, naive, naive approach would be you will look at your assets and you, you will see, hey, okay, I have more assets and then my liabilities in the balance sheet, so I'm fine. The set, set part is that usually the accounting value of the assets is not corresponding to the fair market value of the assets. So you always have to take care about the issue and think about it and look what is the fair market value of the assets. Usually in the company is uh, relatively fine. The accounting value is lower, lower than, than the fair market value, especially if you have some real estates which is you know uh, depreciated in, in, the, in your accounts. So even though if you have negative equity, you still can can be absolutely fine with respect to this test. But you have to you know document it, document it, and usually use some valuation expert. On the other, other side of the issue, you might have some you know, business partner who has quite nice, quite nice amount of the assets of the properties, which cover the, the liabilities. But if the company is not you know, uh, kept well, maintained well, or if there's something wrong, uh, some some liabilities, uh, some assets might be uh, overpriced, and you basically can't see it in in the accounts. So. Be careful about over indebtedness if there is something you know if bad in the company. Just and just one remark, something relatively new in our law, uh, something called measure of critique or in English probably something like coverage gap. Basically, the law says that even though you don't you don't have enough uh, you know liquid liquid uh, financial means for paying all your due, due liabilities. You doesn't have to be uh, in, in insolvency and the limit is 10%. 10%. If you have uh, the difference between your basically money uh, and due liabilities is less than 10%, you still are fine with the, with the uh, Fat insolvency test because in practice usually you won't won't get insolvent because the, the experience says that you will pay later on you will you you will just not pay it immediately. So, and one one last test which is not direct, directly uh, in the act of business corporations but play it plays its role and it's quite important. It's a regulation uh, based on the act of beneficial owner, basically. Yeah. For me, as someone who loves this the, this law, it's hard to say it, but I still must must warn you about this. Uh, basically, if you do not record your ultimate beneficial owner in the beneficial owner list, uh, the company should get paralyzed. Uh, from operating of the general meeting in, 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 in general because the ultimate beneficial owner has seized his, his voting rights so he can't can't make any decision in practice especially where it's an issue it's in, in case you go to the notary who has to check the ultimate beneficial owner register and he, if he can't see it he won't make you he won't let, let make you any any decision but and with respect to the profit, the sanction under this law, if there is no or there is a mis, misreporting uh, of the ultimate manager owner, you can't pay him. You can't pay him any share on profit or other equity. Yeah, so be careful about this and hopefully everyone already took care about, about this. And maybe it might be tricky in practice once you are changing your shareholder. That might might be tricky, and you have to be careful that you will really, really register your new ultimate beneficial owner, preferably before before the decision of the general meeting. So we have oh uh, okay, I exceeded my expectation in timing, but we have last ten minutes, and we have just brief summary uh, of the advances, advance payments on the profit share. Which is a different part, a part of the legislation, 
and it allows you to pay you know even current year profit meaning this year profit even if you want for example to distribute distribute your profit for this you know first first three months of, of this year there's only way how to do it is decide on an interim or uh, advance payment of the dividend there are simplified tests on this and basically you just take uh, the, the current year all previous profits, the current year profit, meaning the profit uh, of, the, of the part of the year uh, in addition to, to the last year. So basically if you do uh, your interim account based on uh, 31st of March this year, you, uh, you have uh, current year profit for these three months and then you have previous, previous profits in the past. Uh, and discount it from other other uh, funds, undistributed funds, and discount uh, previous losses. Yeah, so it's simplified test. You just need an interim account. You will look into them. Uh, these accounts doesn't have to be audited, even though the company has general audit. Even though. If you are deciding on a significant amount, I would definitely recommend you to proceed with a very careful approach. So, uh, if not making audit because it takes quite a lot of time, at least be very careful on the other part of the distribution, meaning the payment, because the, the insolvency test still applies. And in case of interim dividend, because the, the test for the decision on the distribution are lower, and the general meeting is not deciding on distribution. It's only only decision of the board of directors. Uh, you, the director should be very careful. Should be should consider should consider the situation of the company, and we usually recommend, in fact, making also the all free balance test at least at some sort of level that the, the share capital, the registered capital will be still covered. The 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 test. The test uh, against development cost will be cut, and the, the amount will reflect also also the full 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 balance test, uh, taking into account all the parts of the profits and all the parts of the undistributable undistrib funds. Sorry. Again, uh, here's just just summary of what I've basically said. So you need to enter financial statements for the for the period. Uh, since last financial statements until now, the, the tricky thing is, uh, in practice, you can't if you don't if you haven't done your financial statements for 2022, for example, and you haven't closed the books, it's basically in, impossible to to make in terms of financial statements this year, yeah? because it's accountingly uh, unacceptable to to make another statements uh, uh, before closing the previous term. So right now. We are in tricky situation. If you don't have it, you, you if you doesn't have, yeah, if you don't have your financial statements for 2022, you can't do any interim accounts right now. Yeah. Resolution is uh, only based based on uh, based on a resolution of the statutory body, meaning a board of directors or executives. Uh, general meeting is not intervening in, in this decision, which means that the, inter, uh, the advance payment must be set at some point and decided by the general meeting. This is uh, this should should be held at the next general, annual general meeting, deciding on the full financial statements of the period when the profit advance profit distribution was made, and. And uh, the general meeting basically can do, do two things. Uh, it will be decide on the same amount on, or higher, or it will de decide that no, no profit will be distributed. And in such a case, uh, it will, the dividend should be paid back to the company from the shareholder within three months after this decision. So be very careful about this because the advanced dividend is fine, but the shareholder must be careful about it. If there, are, there is not enough funds, the, the general meeting next year might not be able to decide about the, 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 the whole amount of the dividend and the shareholder will be liable to pay it back. 
this is also a quite tricky case uh, in situation when you acquire a company. It's very good to to have uh, some tape or tape of warranty or check whether the the uh, uh, didn't make a advanced dividend distribution because you can't see it from the figures and and uh, you will buy the company, you will make the financial statements, you will find out uh, there is not enough profit to be distributed. And the liability to pay back the, uh, the advanced dividend is connected to the share. So even though the new shareholder didn't receive any advanced dividend, he might be liable to pay it back to the company. And that's all, and I made it with perfect three minutes for your questions. So again, thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, I haven't noticed any new so far, but feel free to edit. And here are our contacts. We will be pleased to discuss with you some, some specific of your situation or some special cases. We, we love it. To, uh, we love thinking about you know tricky situation and it makes us better. Uh, so if you have anything, please feel free to contact us. Uh, it was a pleasure for me. My name is Daniel Vitoš and with Lenka Losenska we will be more than happy to discuss with you anything you would like to know about profit distributions and equity distributions in the future. So, thank you and bye-bye.